Are you ready for this gorgeousness? Hold on to your pumpkin lattes. <gasps> what? This is so pretty. <gasps> this yarn is going to be insane. I was looking at this and I was like, okay, this can't just be any yarn. All right, let me explain. My birthday is in October. I have always loved autumn, even before Starbucks invented pumpkin spice. And let me, let me tell you a trick about that. You know how I get my pumpkin spice? I make coffee in my kitchen. <laughs> Simple as that. Oh gosh. Okay. But growing up, I had birthday parties where like the fun activity of the birthday party was that I made all my friends go in my backyard and make little necklaces out of the fallen leaves that we picked up off the ground. I had more than one birthday party where I dragged everybody to an apple orchard to pick apples. I think I was, that was like when I turned 13, I was like, let's go to the apple orchard. Oh, I'm such a dork. I went with my family to an apple orchard um, just this past weekend. I love fall. I love all the fall things. So I need to do a fall yarn and it has to be special because it's my favorite because deep down inside, I think I'm an autumn goddess. Okay, I was looking and looking and looking for inspiration because this needs to be a textured yarn. I'm not just going to do a straight, balanced, regular, straight spin on this. I have this amazing book. It's Spin Art, Mastering the Craft of Spinning Textured Yarn by JC Boggs. And it's one of my go-tos for inspiration. <sighs> This is like getting back to the basics for me. This was one of the first books I started with. And this is the picture that inspired me. I was like, what if this base right here, what if this is the orange with the silk and the cocoons are black? So it looks like little black cocoons on a long single of uh, the orange. How gorgeous would that be? I have to do this. Here's the thing though, this technique is a little complex because it's not just a core spin and it's not just a beehive. It's a core hive. Hi Fiber friends! Welcome to my channel! If you're enjoying my videos and you'd like to show your support, please click the like button. Make sure that you've subscribed so you don't miss a video. And while you're here, make sure to leave a comment. Alright, let's get back to the show! And let's spin some core hive. Or is it B core? The first thing I'll do is blend this. Merino, Sari Silk Waist, and Tessa Silk at my Let Junior Roving Carter. So let's head to the carter. All right, the way that I usually approach this is to dot, divide everything into equal piles. And that way I'm fairly certain that everything will end up with about the same blend. So let's, let's make four piles. I think four... Uh, strips of roving from this carter will do it. Let's do the Tessa silk next. See that beautiful sheen, amber, merino. There it is, my four piles. But to card this, I'm going to make a sandwich. I'm going to put down a platform of the merino, and then I'm going to put some of each kind of silk and then I'll finish it off with another layer of the merino. Once I've done that I'll take the whole thing off and put it through again to give it more of a blend. I'm 
and sort of guiding it with my finger so it looks like I'm smashing it in there, but I'm really not. Okay, let's go back. Nope, still have more of this. Hmm, there's a lot. So pretty. Okay, let's go back with this silk. Press the silk. Well, you know, maybe I want to sandwich some of the wool and then more of the sari silk. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna sandwich a little more of the wool on there. I think it'll help to blend it up in the end. Okay, and now I'll go back with the silk. Roping. Just like that. And now I'll take the whole thing off and put it through one more time for a good blended effect. I am enjoying this, like every step of the process. Oh, I just love these colors and it's so soft. Oh, this just makes me happy. This is a happy spin day. Every day is a happy spin day. But this is extra. This is extra happy spin day. Look at that. Can you see how that's blended in there? Oh my goodness. Again, I'm not going to go through the liquor in part. I'm not feeding it all the way in. I'm just going to take it off the top. Roving. Oh my goodness. It's like all the colors of an autumn sunset. I love, love, love how this is coming out. This is exactly what I wanted it to look like. I'm so excited. It's so pretty. I'm going to go and card the other ones. And I'll be back to show you the next step because I've got a few more things to do before we can spin this. It's like a sneak peek, but not really because it doesn't have the final texture component, but you can kind of see how the colors will come together. Look at how that pops against the orange. This is going to be so pretty. So I'm going to divide this into four pieces one piece for each bat and then from there I'll divide this down again and that will be the number of cocoons that will go with each bat as I spin along to give it they won't be exactly spaced equally apart but it will give it some sort of balance along the way if you will so that I don't end up with all of the cocoons on the front end and run out halfway through this will kind of keep it distributed throughout I'm going to divide this up. This looks like a mustache. Maybe it's eyebrows. This is what my eyebrows look like when I don't wax them. To the salon! <laughs> I put twist into the core so that when I add the fiber to it, it untwists and in the end, it leaves it a little balanced. But I'm ready to show you how I am constructing this yarn, so let's move to the wheel and take a look. This is what the beehives look like that I'm spinning onto this yarn. So I'm going to show you how I'm constructing this by core spinning and adding beehives. So to core spin, this is core spinning with a core. Oh. And I'm frequently getting caught up on my orifice and hooks, even though this is the bulky flyer, um, it's just not meant for this kind of art yarn. I'm really maxing the capability of my equipment here, but we're getting it done. So. This Elizabeth is a champ. All right, so to core spin, I'm giving it some slow twist and pushing, sort of pushing the fiber 
onto the core and it is wrapping around as I go. With my index finger of my left hand, I'm guiding it onto the core. And with uh, the back three fingers of my left hand, I'm holding the core. So this is, this is holding the core here. This is guiding the fiber onto the core. And then with my right hand, I'm holding the fiber that is spinning onto the core. So this right here is core spinning. So let's do this just for a little moment. Get a little bit of length here before we do another beehive. There we go. And the more that you guide it with your index finger as you core spin, the tighter and smoother you can get that base yarn on there. If you really, really guide it on there directly, you can make it into a very smooth yarn. I'm going somewhere in the middle. The smoothness does help the silk pieces in there to really shine and bring out the natural luster that the silk fibers have. And I think that's really pretty. So let's do a beehive. What I'm going to do now is draft out some of this fiber because I want it to be thin, but I do not want it to separate. This is required for the, for the beehive to not unravel, very important. So here's my fiber that will become the beehive. I'm going to take the tip of it and I'm going to lay the tip with the point that my core is meeting the fiber. So I'll keep the core in the back part of this hand. And what I want to do is have my core fiber wrap around the wool for the cocoon to anchor it to the core. So the tip of it has been wrapped by the core spinning fiber. Now I am going to twist my wool for the cocoon, the black wool. I am twisting, twisting, twisting. And after it's gotten some twist, after it's gained some twist, I will, oh, get my wheel around. Okay. I will start to let it coil onto the core and over the core spinning fiber. As it builds onto there, I shove it forward. And that's what starts to give it that compact look to it. So let's do that again and I shove it forward. Each time I shove it forward, I pull it back just a little uh, to make sure everything is nice and twisted and tight. And there it is. Now once I've come down to the end of it, I make sure it's nice and tight on there. It's not going anywhere. My core spinning fiber has come underneath the cocoon. That's very important. If you break off the core spinning fiber and only put it up to the cocoon, do the cocoon, and then try to reattach it, there's nothing anchoring this end of the cocoon and the whole thing is just gonna unspin itself and fly apart. You won't have any integrity there. So I'm going to let the tail of my cocoon come along the core here. And my core spinning yarn is going to wrap up over the base of the cocoon. And that is what anchors it in place. Just like that. So now it's not going anywhere. It's nice and secure. And that is my, my, I keep calling it a cocoon. It's a beehive. Okay, so let's do this again. I have my core spinning fiber here and I have what will become my beehive here. I am pinching the two together at the point where they're meeting onto the core and I'm going to let them twist so that the core spinning fiber can anchor my beehive to the core. Now I'm going to take the beehive fiber 
and I am going to twist it. I am twisting it in the same direction as the direction that I am spinning the yarn. Then once it has some twist, I will get my wheel going again and I will let it coil onto the core. It's wrapping around just like that. Now, if I want, I could just let it come on loosely and uh, as it comes and let it spread out or I can, or I can shove it up onto itself and make it nice and coiled and compact. And that is what I'm going to do. Now I just dropped my core spinning fiber. I didn't mean to. Now it's trying to spin itself and it's getting all twisted. So this yarn is full of these little frustrations. Don't do this yarn if you're not in a patient mood because you'll be tested. <laughs> Ask me how I know. Okay, so I'm going to take this little tail of the beehive and bring it along the core and then I'm going to pick up where I left off with the core spinning fiber and let that anchor that beehive right on the end. There we go. So now I'm going to continue core spinning until I'm ready for another beehive. With these right up where the light is, you can really see how the, the little beehives have built up on the fiber. And I have one stuck. <laughs> you can see how my orifice, this is the bulky orifice, it's the larger size, but you can see that my beehives are just uh, <laughs> barely squeezing through. So I'm going to gently pull that through, give it a little wiggle, and there it is. I will skip the hooks and wrap that on so that it doesn't get snagged. There, he can chill out with his little friend there. And then I'll keep going until I get to the next one. Well, friends, as you can see, this is a pretty intense, a little bit fussy of a yarn, but the effect that I'm getting from it is gorgeous and I'm so happy with how it's coming out. Make sure to like this video if you're enjoying this yarn. Like this video if you love autumn like me and don't forget to subscribe. I'm going to finish spinning these up and I'll be right back to show you the final yarn. See you in the next video!